Um, we have two hearings before this evening. Uh, the first one is a continuation. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a continuation of a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, on Wednesday, July 17, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of Catherine McLeod, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws 7.3 to construct a deck to existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at Winter Street, this is map 23, lot 73 in Reading, Mass. Uh, this is a continuation. It has been continued. Um, this is the fourth. We went through two other continuations, so this is the one that has been before us. We received a um, email from the applicant this evening, or actually dated July 10th, I think it was. Um, requesting a withdrawal without prejudice. Um, that was one of the options that we had given them the last time they were here me on the 15th of May. So apparently they have decided that they're seeking other alternatives. Um, any questions before the board? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to accept the applicants Request for a withdrawal without prejudice. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Five seconds. Um, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Five zero zero. <coughs> Take care of yourself after this. So this was the fourth one. Uh -huh. Yeah. The first one was the April. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I have it here. Uh, that was continued to the 15th. Of yeah, April 17th. On the 17th. And then it was continued to the May 15th. Yep. And postponed to May 22nd. July 17th. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll write that. Okay. Sharp one there. Mm -hmm. Try to keep it one page, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Without prejudice. <laughs> the uh, second hearing before the board this evening, um, we have 104 Salem Street. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, the 17th of July, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of Brian McGrail, operation pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 8, on appeal of the decision of the building inspector regarding the applicability or the application of the zoning Bylaw section 5.3.2, footnote 1, at the property located at 104 Salem Street, Reading, Mass. Unless there's an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as was the select board, the town clerk, police department, fire department, building department, conservation commission, engineering division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stone, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. It does not hurt, um, but if you do want to speak, you have to be sworn in tonight. And even if you don't know if you want to speak or you're not, it's safer to take the... <laughs> or attorney's exempt, Mr. Chairman? You don't have to. Um, do you swear the tes testimony given before this board this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do? I do. Okay. Thank you. And everybody has signed in now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, normally, if this were a, a regular meeting, a, a hearing uh, for relief, um, we would hear the applicant's request and then move right into the rest of the documentation and so forth. However, 
this is our appeal from the decision of the building inspector. Um, so what I have elected to do is have the building speak, building commissioner speak first on his on his denial letter and what his decision was initially, <coughs> so that the board understands that, and then we can go forward, counselor, with uh, your um, request for uh, remediation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my summary sort of is in three parts. One is a, a brief summary of how we got to this point. Uh, part two is uh, so com some comments regarding Attorney McGrail's um, Exhibit A document. And the third part would be sort of a closing statement, what I could do now, or I could wait till later on in the hearing process for my closing comments. So I'll start with the, the lead up to tonight. On or about April 23rd, 2019, Attorney McGrail, uh, further known as the applicants from this point, met with me at the building department office to submit an application to remove an existing single family home at 104 Salem Street and replace it with a new two family dwelling. They provided me with a copy of an opinion letter from building inspector Glenn Redmond dated March 27th, 2018 stating his opinion that the existing structure qualifies to be altered into a two-family dwelling. I reviewed the letter and then informed the applicants that expect, Inspector Redmond's letter only gives them the ability to apply for a building permit to convert the existing home into a two-family dwelling. The applicants then pointed out and directed me to Zone and Bylaw 7.8, which addresses voluntarily, voluntary demolition and reconstruction. Further explained to me that this is the section of the bylaws that allows them to proceed with the proposed project. I then had the applicants apply for a demolition permit for us as they had already obtained required town department and utility sign off approvals for demolition. I then informed the applicants that I would review the proposed construction of the new two family dwelling and get back to them. Attorney McGrail asked that I call him directly with my decision as soon as possible, which I did, and after that phone call, I followed up with my formal denial letter. I would like to continue. Would you like me to address Exhibit A comments at this point? Or wait? Um, I'm thinking that uh, Mr. Counselor is going to address that anyway, so why don't you briefly summarize that and we can get into the specifics as, as Counselor McGrill. Uh, exhibit A from the attorney. The, Bil the building commissioner's denial cites section point eight of the bylaw entitled voluntary demolition and reconstruction. Said section 7.8 is not applicable to the building permit application in that said section only applies to non-conforming structures. The commissioner's denial itself on page one states the existing structure use is conforming, emphasis added, in the S15 zoning district. Uh, my comments to Number one on Exhibit A is, during our meeting at the building department on 423, the applicants stressed the, ac the applicability of Section 7.8. Section 7.8 is referenced in my denial letter as the voluntary demolition and reconstruction is not permitted by right in this case, as asserted by the applicants on April 23rd. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, just you could, could Mark repeat that? I just missed that last comment. The last comment. Thank you, Mark. Sure. 7.8 is referenced in my denial letter as the voluntarily demolition, voluntary demolition and reconstruction is not permitted by right in this case as asserted by the applicants on April 23rd, 2019. Comment two. The commission's denial on page two states, in my opinion, note one is referenced above, referring to note one of zone bylaw table 5.3.2, allows a conversion, emphasis added of that existing dwelling only, the dwelling constructed before 1942. Contrary to the Building Commission's opinion, said note one does not contain the word conversion, but rather contains the word altered. My comment to note to the attorney's comment too, the applicant is correct in so much that note one does not contain the word conversion. It is of my opinion and interpretation that the word alter in note one refers to the use of the existing single family home as use is in the alteration definition. Thus my opinion is that alter is a conversion 
of the use from a single family home into a two family home. Again, note one does not contain the word conversion, but I might add, in the bylaw definition of alteration, you will not find the words remove, demolish, destruct, level, or raise. And that's, that's my comments to this point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's a lot to digest. But I think by doing that, you have uh, at least the parameters set from his denial letter. And since this is a um, uh, question on the on the commissioner's decision, um, I thought that that was important to get that out first. We also have a letter uh, from town council, uh, which will be um, we'll bring that in after uh, Councilor McGrail does his part in uh, talking about exactly where we where he stands in terms of the denial letter, because this is a again a reversal on the decision of the building inspector. And that's the only thing that we can discuss tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian McGrail. I'm an attorney with offices at 599 North Avenue, right across the border in Wayfield. Uh, I've appeared before this board before, before the boards in the town of Reading. Um, with me tonight uh, is Rose Priest. Rose is a representative of HB Development, who is the applicant uh, in this appeal, and also my client. First of all, I would like to thank the Building Commissioner, Mark, uh, because as he stated, when I did approach him on April 23rd, uh, he was extremely receptive and helpful and uh, cooperative and um, very time efficient. Um, and uh, I appreciate that because you don't run into that in every building department that you go into. I go into a lot of them. And uh, he knew that I wanted a resolution to this one way or another, and I couldn't have got a faster resolution. I think I had a, a let he asked me if I wanted a letter because I think I knew where it was going to go, and I said, yeah, absolutely, and the sooner the better, and I think I had it the next day. So thank you for that. Um, with that said, we do have a disagreement, and you know, I'll call it a friendly disagreement, really uh, not between us, but between an interpretation of the language and the zoning bylaw. Um, as uh, Mark had mentioned, uh, on April 23rd, we filed for a permit to alter a single family dwelling that was in existence prior to 1942, which at that time had at least a finished and had no principal rooms into a two family dwelling pursuant to 5.3.2, note one of the Reading Zoning Bylaw. Um, I guess just, if I can just pass it out, I have a copy of that just to kind of keep a track of this and submit some evidence. Andrew, can you pass a little mm -hmm. So we, where you're getting that, as we all know, uh, Mark denied the application. And so we, we are appealing that denial pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 8, and Running Zoning Bylaw Section 4.5 and asking that the uh, denial be overturned uh, by your board. Um, what you, you'll see from what we submitted um, under note one, what it states in a residence district, a single family dwelling existing prior to April 1942, which at that time had at least eight finished and habitable, habitable principal rooms may be altered. And I think a key term here that you wanna remember as I go through this is alter um, into a two family dwelling provided that the external appearance of the single family dwelling is retained. So really the first trigger when you look at this section of the bylaw is to say, do we qualify uh, to alter, uh, to be built prior to 1942, have the eight rooms, et cetera. So in that, in that regard, my client purchased this property well over a year ago with the intent of doing what we're proposing, or at least something similar to it. Um, so at that time, he approached um, Glenn Rembin, uh, who is uh, and works in, is a zoning officer in the town of Reading, uh, and Mr. Redman issued him a letter dated March 27, 2018. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And for the record, Mr. Chairman, uh, this was provided to my client at that time. It says, to it, who it may concern, I have recently viewed the property located at 104 Salem Street, Reading, Mass. The existing dwelling contains minimum of eight finished and habitable rooms as existed prior to April 1942. Under Section 5.3.2, Note 1, it is my opinion that this dwelling qualifies to be altered into a two-family hall. Um, so, needless to say, my client relied on that letter uh, when you know in preparing an end end or acquiring uh, the property. Um, one one discrepancy that I do have with Mark. Mark had mentioned that um, um, that when, when I spoke and approached him, that I referred to Section Seven Point Eight that we were relying on Seven Point Eight, and I don't recall that. Um, that I, I, I do not agree with that statement. That's basically the, the one point that I don't factually agree with with Mark. Uh, as a matter of fact, my building permit application has an Exhibit A to it uh, with the basis of what we were requiring that's in your application package. And, and that Exhibit A, not, not an Exhibit A to the application, but an Exhibit A to the building permit application, references 5.3, uh, references 5.3, uh, no more. Specifically, it doesn't reference at all. Uh, because as you as you've seen probably from my submittal, you hear you'll hear tonight, 7.8 is not relevant and not applicable um, to this circumstance whatsoever. Um, so, you know, as as uh, you have heard, um, we were denied, and um, I believe, and I have copies. I don't know if you need a copy of that denial letter. If you'd like that, if you already have that. Okay. And, you know, as Mark mentioned, uh, his denial letter, which we rely on and which is in the record, cites Section 7.8 of the bylaw uh, entitled Vol Voluntary Demolition and Reconstruction. And I think uh, it's very important to note that 7.8 only applies to uh, non-conforming structures. Um, this is not a non-conforming structure. It's not that circumstance. Uh, what we've applied for is under 5.3.2. Um, it's very important to stress that this lot uh, at 104 Salem Street is a legal complying lot to the current zoning requirements in the town of Reading. Uh, the house that currently sits on there is complying, and what we propose to build is in 100% compliance from all dimensional requirements and regulations under your zoning bylaw. So we're not looking for relief at all, uh, indoor any finding or anything of that sort, and that it's not required. Uh, for what we're what we are, what we are proposing, um, and you know, with all due respect to Mark, his his letter actually references and notes uh, that the existing structure is conforming uh, under S15 zoning district. Um, then uh, the denial that we received goes on to state, um, as Mark had mentioned, that in his opinion, Note One is referenced uh, allows a conversion of that existing dwelling only. Um, that the dwelling constructed before 1942. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned in my Exhibit A, what we have to stress, we've got to go by what's in your zoning bylaw. Um, that's what people like my client are able to rely on. Uh, they, they buy properties and, and make plans on what they're going to do. And under footnote one, um, there is no word conversion uh, that I passed out. Conversion is not mentioned. Um, what is mentioned is altered, may be altered. Um, and in my world, you know, dealing with zoning every day, the first thing you do when you're confronted with words in the zoning bylaw, you look at definitions in that bylaw. And say, is it, is it a defined term? So what does alter mean? Um, and, that's, and that's what uh, my client did um, and what we did. Um, so in that regard, if I may, this is just a section of your bylaw. Mm -hmm. It deals with the definition of alteration.
Well, under your bylaw, the, the, the word alteration, again, is a defined term, and it's extremely broad um, when you read it. Uh, it says any construction. You can't get any broader than that. Um, reconstruction, which in the land use world means something's demolished and <laughs> rebuilt. That's what it means. Um, and, but then it goes on even broader. It says, or other similar, act, similar action, to broaden it even more, uh, that results in a change in the structural parts. Height, number of stories, exits, size, use, or location, contemplating that there's going to be a major change. You can actually change a location of where the building was or is, or other structure. So. In our mind, <laughs> this is very clear, uh, that alteration uh, is a broad term and certainly allows for what we are proposing uh, for the reconstruction of a uh, two-family dwelling that will meet all of your zoning requirements and that what is, what, which is allowed and contemplated under footnote one to 5.3.2. Uh, so basically, it's, it's our position that the bylaw is clear on its face with defined terms in this regard. Um, and again, with all due respect to Mark, but it doesn't leave any room for opinion. Um, opinion comes in when there might be some vaguety and interpretation. This is very clear um, that this is what the bylaw says. Um, maybe some folks don't like it um, or want it. But with all due respect to your board, and I'm sure you know, you're, you're a very uh, smart and seasoned board, the obligation is to uphold the bylaw, whatever it says, no matter who likes it or doesn't like it. And I think it's pretty clear um, where, where that word stands and how it fits in. Um, as further evidence of that, that maybe some folks don't like that, um, I don't know if the board is aware, but uh, currently the CPDC is actually holding public hearings for a proposed bylaw change on this footnote one. Um, they've had uh, at least two or three hearings in this regard with, with proposed language, um, which this is the latest that I was able to pull. It talks about what they're thinking about and I think what they plan on presenting to the November town meeting. That's how it's listed on the website and we have followed that process and uh, Julie before Andrew and Andrew kept us apprised of that and I've actually had discussions with Mark and I, I thank them for that. Um, but which really does not have any bearing on what's before us this evening. Well, I think it has bearing from the extent of how people look at this term um, and how maybe some people don't like it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's pretty evident from the, from the face of that because when you look at what I presented to you, what is being proposed by the planning department, who does planning in this in this town? Um, it's it, what they're doing is they're getting rid of the word altered and replacing it with conversion. So in, and then putting some other parameters and reducing the ability to do size, etc. Which I agree doesn't have anything to do with what's your before your board, but it certainly is evidentiary as to how um, folks in the planning department look at this term um, alter and why they want to change it because if it already meant conversion. Why change it? Um, so, in any event, you know that's our position, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I guess in summary, we believe that the bylaw speaks for itself. It's very clear on its face, um, and um, with all due respect to Mark and again all the courtesy that you've shown us, and we appreciate it. Um, we feel that we're entitled to proceed with this project as presented, and we request that um, the denial be overturned. Um, I have just have two questions, and then we'll rotate it through the board for you. Uh, point of clarification, uh, I'll do the last question first because it came up last. And that was, are you seeking any relief um, or questions about the impact of what's going on with the hearings to change uh, that section of the bylaw in regard to what you're asking for this evening? Not seeking any relief. Okay. So it's an appeal seeking an over overturn. Okay. Not to say we won't be back at a future date seeking relief, but we haven't applied for that at this point, Mr. Chairman. Because it doesn't, it would not apply no. under se Section 40A. That's very clear. Correct. Which I, being a student of zoning, I know that you're aware of, so I just wanted to clarify. Yes, 
Correct. And my other question for clarification was, I, I heard that you uh, differed from what Mark heard on um, the uh, second sentence, 7.8. Um, are you asking uh, through the, because the, there's no clear statement that I can see in the application um, for the building permit, not that we get it, but uh, are you asking for a removal of the present structure there? Yeah, what we did, so f first of all, as far as 7.8 goes, I might disagree with Mark. We disagree with that, but I don't think it's relevant anyways. Um, I don't think it matters what you know any discussion was. I think the, um, his denial um, and my um, appeal speak for themselves. Um, so I don't think any, any discussion really matters um, what's before the board, because what's before the board is the denial letter. And, um, and Mark states other reasons beyond 7.8 anyways. Um, and um, so I don't think that that's relevant. As far as raising the structure, yes, we, when we applied with Mark, um, we actually applied for both. We applied for a raising permit and the building permit. Um, Mark astutely saw this issue, um, this um, disagreement, and you know, and I thank him because I think his position was, you know, let's just bring this to a head on a disagreement, um, and you know, I'm going to put this, put the, put the raising application aside um, because nobody wanted wants to raise a house until you have this issue resolved. So, and that's why I thanked him at the beginning of the hearing because he, he just said, you know, let's just bring this to a head because I know you're going to appeal it as I was and we'll end up being at the Board of Appeals anyways. Okay. Does that answer the question, Mr. Chairman? Well, from what I hear you saying is that you applied for both uh, and you do want to take down this present structure and you want to replace it with the two family. Yes. And the two family goes back to the bylaw um, footnote one. Uh, of when the house was originally built. Yes, it's a qualifying standard to be eligible. Okay, okay. Uh, the reason I asked that is because we also have a letter from the um, town council relative to that, and that was a year ago. Uh, that was back in, um, um, I think you all have it in your packets. Yep. Um, October 9, 2018. Yep. And that goes over the clarity, too. Now, I can do one of two things. Um, we can read this into the record, put this into the record now, and then I'll go around the board and ask if there are questions further of you, the petitioner, for this particular case, um, in address. Um, or I can ask questions. We can ask questions from the board if you have any questions thus far. If there is none, we can put this in and then finish up with the board. Does the board wish to move in one direction or another? Um, I, 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 I think we should maybe read that into the record, maybe the relevant portions of it. And well, I think only one relevant portion. It's basically there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, paragraph on the second page. Well, basically, it is addressing... Um, the rest of the board feels okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the letter dated the 9th of October 2018 really addresses the um, same type of situation here, but it was the footnote in, in uh, do you have a copy of that? I have not seen that. Why hasn't it been provided to me yet? Um, you have an extra copy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, it's relative to uh, what we just talked about uh, and the sequence of the removal of the structure there and replacement with the two family um, versus the existence of a single family located on that lot prior to 42 and being a um, conforming structure at the time. Um, and this was, this has been before the board in this particular format a number of different times before. And I think that's what drew the attention of planning uh, to this. And we, the board has, has, has had the same problem with that um, and board asked for that also. 
by back a, almost, actually a little bit more than a year ago. Um, so this is the rebuttal to that. But uh, there are a few things in that I think that are critical. Um, one is um, I, I did look at uh, um, number two on you have the full letter in front of you, so you're, you're reading it, I know, I just do. immediately. But um, for anybody else here, the question comes down, well, why don't you read the second one? Sure. Uh, basically, I think what, what the letter did, he, he, in the first page, just so we said, you know what we're doing, he, the, the uh, town council just reiterated basically what the bylaw states. And then he goes on on page two to give his opinion on this footnote one. And I believe in this particular case, the relevant uh, opinion here, or part opinion that he has is number two on uh, that, which is, and, and I'll read this right from uh, verbatim from the letter. Uh, I understand that developers have sought to convert single family dwellings into two family dwellings pursuant to footnote one with the goal then uh, put off raising, or then raising the dwelling to build an entirely new two-family dwelling. In my opinion, that's town council, this is not permissible under footnote one. This footnote authorizes only the conversion of a single-family dwelling in existence prior to April 1942 in the ongoing use of that converted dwelling. If the original pre-1942 structure ceases to exist, then footnote one is no longer available for use by the property owner. Without the benefit of this footnote, the table of uses prohibits two-family dwellings in the S15, S20, and S40 districts. So that's, that's basically town, town council's opinion on this uh, when he was queried uh, on that. So I think that's the, the relevant portion of the letter that applies in this particular case. Well, there is a, another section you which is relevant too, and that is uh, number six on his list. In number six, I'll page. be glad to read that. Okay. In number six, there can only, there can be only limited expansion of the original signal, single family structure mm -hmm as part of an alteration authorized by footnote one for several reasons. First, the converted two-family dwelling must satisfy, satisfy all applicable dimensional requirements, including yard requirements, maximum coverage, and maximum building height. Nothing in footnote one exempts a converted two-family dwelling from the normal dimensional requirements within the applicable zoning district. Second, as discussed above, footnote one was intended to allow for consisting interior area, at least eight habitable principal rooms, to allow for the creation. I do not believe footnote one contemplated significant expansion of the building footprint in order to create the area necessary for a new, for the new second unit. Third, the requirement that the resulting dwelling must maintain external appearance as a single family dwelling suggests that substantial exp expansion of the existing structure as part of the conversion from a single family to a two family dwelling is not permissible. I believe that footnote one was intended primarily to allow for the conversion of existing interior space to use as a second dwelling unit and not to allow for that second unit to be created through substantial new construction. Some expansion of the original structure may be allowed, but a substantial increase in scale, particularly one of the magnitude that would lead a reasonable person to conclude that the structure contains two dwellings is prohibited. <coughs> That's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, it so, looking at that also, um, and I think uh, 
Mark looked at that also uh, probably after his his letter, or maybe it was before he issued the original letter, but I'll let you. Um, have you seen Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, for the record, um, I have read this letter. I was not aware of this letter when I talked to Attorney McGrill. Okay. I, otherwise, that would have been part of my denial letter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's out there. So um, I'm going to um, ask if you want to reply to that, Counselor, or as we have done before, we'll go around the table and see if there are other questions, and then we'll move on. Could I reply to that rather quickly, Mr. Chairman? Chairman, sure, go ahead. Thank you very much for the courtesy. I appreciate that. Um, so, as I always say, when, when I'm dealing with um, letters from town council, town councils are exactly that. They're not town judges. Uh, they don't write your bylaw. Um, they don't vote at town meeting. Um, they can give, I guess, their opinions. Uh, but when you read Attorney Heap's letter, basically, you know, what I will say is, it's contrary to what the bylaw states. I think what it is, is what the planning department wants it to be. Because with all due respect, as I mentioned, there's some people that don't like the way it's written out, hence change. So if you look at his letter, he'll say, in my opinion, well, that's his opinion. Um, and then he'll say, you know, I believe. Um, and then he says, footnote one was intended with all due respect to attorney, he, he doesn't know what footnote one was intended for. He didn't, he didn't vote at town meeting when, this, when footnote one was enacted into your zoning bylaw. What the responsibility of this board is, is to look at the bylaw on its face. There's no room for interpretation here or opinions, as I've mentioned. The bylaw is clear. It referenced may be altered. That's a defined term. Attorney Heap goes to the word conversion again. Word conversion is not in the bylaw <coughs> in relation to this. Um, we are meeting every setback requirement dimensionally in your bylaw. We're not looking, not looking for any relief. This house clearly looks like a single family dwelling. Has a single entrance, designed that way. We clearly meet that uh, aspect of the bylaw. That has not even, even been mentioned. So um, what I'll say to the board, um, you know, there's some very intelligent members on this board. Look at your bylaw. Um, the bylaw has the word altered. It's a clear definition. The word conversion is not in there. So with all due respect, we would ask you to look deep and, and, and I, in our opinion, do the right thing and, and not listen to what people might want or what they think. Do what your bylaw says currently. Thank you. Um, Eric. Questions or comments? <coughs> um, maybe I have to summarize and then pose a question to the applicant. Okay. So if I am correct, Attorney McGrill, your interpretation is because the word, the verb alter is in the bylaw, that, and we, you know, you provided the board with the definition in the definition section of the bylaw for alteration that and i don't know if you have it or not but we were provided with a a list of every possible qualifying pre-1942 dwelling in town and i i think i know the answer to this but i think you would say it's a fair reading of the bylaw to say that all of those um properties that the town has noted would essentially by right, assuming that they did in fact qualify under the footnote one, would be available to be converted uh, into two family properties. As the bylaw is written now. Well, I think they would be eligible to be altered, not converted, uh, if, if they have the uh, prerequisites of the eight rooms, et cetera, as, as we stated. And assuming they have yeah. met all the dimensional But I think you'll find that most of them are going to struggle to meet those dimensional requirements. Sure. Um, but in your our, case... Our lot is an extremely big lot. I think it's about 23,000 square feet, way over the minimum. has tremendous setbacks, meet, meet all the setbacks. So to answer your question, um, yes, I do. And, and I also think that's why the planning department is proposing to change your bylaw. Because I think they, with all due respect and all honesty, I think they've read it and they said, oh boy, we've got a problem here and we've got to fix it. And, um, you know, and we're here, but, and we're before the clock. So, you know, that's, that's where we are. 
Fair enough. And I think it's a fair reading of town council's letter here that he takes a far more limited reading of the, of the footnote, such that only the actual structure existing in 1942 would qualify for this, in his words, conversion and under the bylaws, alteration, such that if this dwelling caught on fire, the next day you couldn't uh, rebuild it and then go in for the conversion. And that he's noted that the eight room uh, kind of threshold is indicative of the idea that that would allow enough interior space to allow for the use of a, of a two foot. <clears throat> so I get what you're saying about the verbiage of alteration versus his uh, emphasis added on converted. He underlines that the entire time. But I think you're asking the board to go entirely against what town council has weighed in on. And I think for me, I would say that the only thing that I could do is kick it back to town council with your observations of the verb altered versus converted, because obviously you're emphasizing altered, which happens to be in the bylaw, and his letter, uh, he's using the word converted, which and see if that changes his opinion on that. I think, for me at least, to go completely against town council, which the town pays a, uh, you know, a fee for and that we rely on for all other matters that you know, affect the legal aspects of the town, I don't know that I would feel comfortable just voting completely in opposition to what his letter set up. But I also think that you make some good points and that you know, we need to, at least I need to reconcile. So that's all I have. Sorry. <coughs> this isn't the first time the subject has come up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if we literally look at the bylaw as it exists today, we we'll all wrestle with that word alter. I think if you, some people will look at it and say, if you tear down the building that's there now, that building that existed in 1942 no longer exists. It's gone. It's history. Okay? Therefore, you can look at it this way more. It's a, it's a new ball game. All right? Then I look at the definition of alteration. And I think that muddies it up even more because the definition says any construction, any reconstruction, or similar action that results in a change in really everything, including the use, okay? So that kind of muddies up the definition of alter. And now you get to the point where now you're changing the word alter to convert. And I think those are two very distinct words that I think are two distinctly different, in my mind, opposite. If you're going to convert it to something, that would tell me that you can take the existing building and convert it. Or convert means I'm just going to put a whole new building. Okay. So there's a lot of room for interpretation, but I think from my viewpoint, if you literally interpret the bylaw as it is written on this day, uh, it's hard for me to not agree with what Marcus put down in writing. I know that there's a an issue, this thing is being proposed as a change, we'll go probably in some form, some of the list to town meeting. And uh, if, if they were to change it from alter to convert, I would probably feel much more comfortable with what you want to do, all right? But as it is written today, I, I just have trouble signing up for, for your request for an appeal, okay, at this point. Mm -hmm. On July 17th, 2019. Uh, in, in this particular case, I, I would agree with the building inspector. I think he made the right decision on this. I believe that was fully the intent of the bylaw, is to retain the existing structure and 
reconstruct that structure, what else would you call it? Construction, reconstruction within that structure to convert it to a two-family home. That's the intent of the bylaw. Once that structure is demolished, you have a vacant lot, nice vacant lot. You can build a beautiful house there, but it's a single family zoned zoning district. And two families aren't allowed unless you came for a variance, something to that effect, but you're not here for any relief on that aspect. I think in this particular case, we're dealing with semantics in regards to definitions or whatever, alter, <coughs> reconstruct, <coughs> construct, it, convert. I believe the intent here was to work with the existing structure and to maintain that existing structure to convert it into a two-family home. And that's the way I see it. I believe that's the way town council saw it. And I believe that's what the intent of the bylaw was. And in this particular case, uh, I would have to support the uh, building inspector's decision. Yeah. So I waver back and forth on this. Um, when I read this, it kind of reminded me of another example we have with accessory apartments and how applicants are trying to accomplish two things at once. They've <coughs> converted the single family. They've, they, they basically rehab the single family, increase the square footage to allow the accessory apartment to be larger than it would have. And when I read this, and to your question, does it qualify? Um, I think it does. I think um, you have, if it's finished, habitable right now, you can convert it, it can be altered, so you can physically change it, and you can change the use to a two-family. And what's to stop you from having that? You get your building permit, you, whatever you need for it, you get your occupancy permit, and you get a two-family. Who's to stop you from demoing it the next day? And then under voluntary demolition, rebuild the same thing. To me, you could do that, but it's almost <laughs> like you're playing a game here. Um, but when I read it, I do see the merits of your case, and I think you have a reasonable interpretation of this. But then I waver back and forth and try to think, well, what's the actual intent of the zoning bylaw? And I, I feel like I just have an opinion on that, but I'm not comfortable with reading it and all the different interpretations, especially from counsel and the applicant, of what actually the intention of the bylaw is. So I think it is gray, and I really don't know where I stand on this. Okay. A few questions on the existing structure. Um, I noticed that from the footprint, it looks like it's a building that had been added on to progressively. Is that correct over time? Yeah. Yes. Are those, is the entirety of the structure that's there currently all pre-1942, or are there additions that were post-1942? Well, I looked at that, and he determined that the, I think the qualifying aspect were, was the original aspect, original components to it. Because he, I, I, I'm pretty sure Glenn visited the property yes, he was twice. Yes. At least once that he actually walked, went to the property with my client to see it. So he did his due diligence in, in doing that letter, as he always does. So my understanding is that there's an original building, 1942, that has progressively been added onto since then. But the original pre-1942 building has the eight rooms Correct. plus more. Yes. Correct. I believe that's true. And also, just for clarification, your intent is to remove the present building and build something new. That's, that's what we've applied to do. Correct. Reconstruct. I, I do. My understanding of the bylaws and the zoning was that it came into effect at a certain point there are pre-existing buildings that didn't conform to that new zoning that got developed. And the intent was to work with that those buildings disappear, demo or whatnot. It is not the town's perspective that a new structure should be allowed to be built per the old guidelines it would then have to be done according to the new zoning because that structure has been removed and gone. And the idea is to get new buildings built to conform with what the current bylaws 
zoning regulations, et cetera, of that site and property are. It seems to me you have a situation where you have a house that you should take advantage of, convert into a two bedroom, but not anticipate that. Two family, me? No, sorry, no. two family. My bad. Uh, but not anticipate we can remove this down to the foundation and rebuild it with a new layout to meet the two family unit. I think that the intent, I know the intent is that you have to work within the given structure to obtain a two dwelling unit on that property. So I would uphold with the finding. Is that correct? Well, I disagree with the, I respect your opinion, but um, but I understand. But just to, to point out that um, we, what we're proposing will meet all the current set, zoning setbacks and dimensional requirements. So we'll meet those. The only, we'll meet those. The only caveat would, would be it would be a two-family, which we think is allowed under the bylaw. But that, as the chair has said, that two-family is not allowed by right in that zoning right. district. So that is correct. Yeah. You can take what's yeah. existing yeah. and modify it into a two-family, but not take it down yeah. and build a two-family. Part of the issue you have with this house is 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 the condition of it is extremely it's in tough shape. Um, it's in a state of disrepair. Uh, but you, you haven't submitted any evidence of that or anything. I mean, if, if that is going to be an argument, you should well, no, submit no, evidence. I'm just, no, uh, well, it's no, it's really not an argument. It's really okay. just a factual point. I mean, you know, so so if I if I can ask a question, Mr. Chair, um, okay. through you, and, and maybe Mark can answer this. You know, I I would think from what I'm hearing, the 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 biggest problem that the board is struggling with on this is is the total demolition raising reconstruction um, if if the house were preserved and an addition were put on it to accomplish the two that met the dimensional requirements uh, met all of the dimensional requirements do you think it would be a different um, scenario maybe that's a question through you to the building commissioner because um, that would be more his ruling initially I guess if I may so well, go ahead, Mark. So you would keep the original structure, add an addition, and then do the the alter conversion to a two-family. Would be part of I, it. I I think that's more within the intent of the bylaw. Right. I mean, I can't say yes or no. What I'm proposing. I don't need to put you on the spot. I, I think that's that's more in line of what was. Yeah intended the word we keep yeah. using yeah, and I'm th it was just for conversations I'm certainly not looking to hold the commissioner to anything he states in that regard well that's why no. at the very beginning I asked you specifically is this what you're requesting the demolition uh, yeah. and the and the recognition that it is a uh, by by right have prior to 1942 yeah. eight rooms mm -hmm. but there's a there's a lot of this that has gone on since that particular time. Um, the house was built in 1850. It had multiple uh, sections built upon it in, in the back. Yeah. And the result is that there we have a record card, but the record card does only list one, and that was repair of the roof uh, back in the. Um, back in 2000. September of 2000. Uh, there's a record card that goes back further. We don't have it, but I'm assuming that from there, all of those met the requirement when uh, Glenn went out and looked at it, and he, he determined that there were sufficient eight rooms in the, in the hospital rooms in the structure um, at that particular time. Some may or may not have been, but he didn't go through that. He only made one, one determination. Now, the concerns that I have is being the last person to, to respond, um, which I reserve. Um, we're looking at something that is plagued or beleaguered uh, the board and I think the staff for many years. It has become a focal point in the last two or three years. I can tell you that right down the road, uh, maybe 200 feet on the opposite side of Salem Street is the exact same scenario that we dealt with more than a year ago. And the, the resulting structure that came out of that was that it was stripped to the bones, <coughs> altered, 
with small, very, uh, small alterations and the product that came out of it was far better than the initial request that came in to tear it down and replace it with a two family. It looks like part of the community. <coughs> what, you what, you, what you submitted was, uh, in my mind, it was not. It was just a slap on, the, on that particular lot of a two family making sure that we had one center entrance and that was it. But going back to what town council mentioned is that even if you came in and you altered that um, and you came in and you took down the portion that you don't need and you altered it and came up with it and you used it as a two family and you did not tear it down and you stripped it down and did whatever had to be done, it would have been an option, but it's no longer, as soon as you as soon as you do that, in this last paragraph, he mentions that it would no longer be a non-conforming use. Um, it would not be entitled to that any longer. So tearing it down is a major, major issue um, with this, and that's why I asked you at the very beginning of the hearing yeah. what you wanted to do. Well, it is, it is, it is conforming now. And it yeah. won't be, but you had said uh, you know it's not conforming. No, no, no. after you convert it, it oh, well, we, we don't believe it will be. We believe it will be non-conforming in regards to use. I believe even it we believe yes. it won't. It will be conforming because it was done pursuant to foot footnote one. Right. And, and, and we go back to the you know to the correct. Term so it doesn't operation. right. Yeah. Which is so I think what we've done is we've gone around. You've heard the comments of the board, but I still have another section to come up. And that section is opening it up to the public. Whoever wishes to make comment, pro or con, or ask questions of the board uh, through you, or <coughs> through the board to you. Um, so I'll ask at this time, is there anybody who wishes to speak? Please state your name and your address. My name is Al Perry. I live at 10 Spring Street, which abuts the property that we're discussing. I don't want to get involved in the uh, discussion of the legal aspects of the property. However, in the interim, the property has gone to waste. It's overgrown. It's, the house is going to fall down if somebody doesn't do something soon. And thirdly, the more important part is, I think the house is infected with rodents. And I think those rodents are starting to uh, go in all directions, especially my property. And I'm wondering who is responsible for the property to clean it up while we're going through all this legal aspect of, uh, of the situation. I can't answer that for you. Mm. Why not? It's a board. It's a board of health. <laughs> you need to go to the board of health. I went to the board of health. Uh, that, that, that's not in the purview of the zoning board of appeals. Well, we, we're going to let this property just fall apart. No, I don't think so. I think that, that, that you have uh, the well, owner who wants something question. done. The people who bought the property, aren't they responsible for the contents of the property and the area around the property? Well, there she is and there's her attorney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. we, in the interim, we in the interim suffer the, uh, the consequences of not, nobody taking care of that property. I think that's a shame. Well, I think you need to take it to another board, not another board, but at least another area. Well, who would you su suggest that I go to? I suggest I Mr. Chairman, if I might interrupt. Go ahead. Um, we did receive a complaint um, last week. A letter went out to the property owners. I can't recall, honest, if I sent it last Monday or this Monday, to be honest, um, addressing um, <clears throat> the potentially unsafe condition of the structure regards being open to the weather or entry. Um, also in that letter, I addressed that they may get further information from the Board of Health regarding the outside conditions of the property. Do you a copy of that letter um, before you leave? Um, but I, I don't recall, but it was in the it was in the recent last two weeks. We got it today, Mark. You did? Okay. Yeah. I, what was the date on it, please? Uh, July 15th. Like so it was Monday. I know there was a great concern on the other part of town when they built uh, the, the, those condominiums down by the railroad station. And uh, the infestation of rats in that area became a great concern for all the people who lived in that area. 
I am now going through that same kind of situation. I understand I'm, that. I'm looking somewhere for recourse. Right. I understand that. I did CC the Board of Health on my letter um, to make them aware of the situation. I, I can't control the Board of Health, so all I'm telling you is, well, is I, I wanted, sent the... I wanted to present my concern that, that's, No, that's no problem. It's a great concern. I was, just trying to, I was just trying to let you know that we are addressing it. Okay. I hope it's addressed later. So, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Is there any, anybody else who wishes to speak from the public sector? Seeing none, I'll close the subject matter of the, uh, of the public hearing and uh, we'll move on to making uh, a decision, I would assume. Um, Mr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt. Andrew is patient. I'm sorry. I see him. Oh, no, that's like okay. To, I was sure? just going to note town council's number four to try to alleviate Nick's concerns, and I think from what we've heard as well that it is converted by right, so if demoed, it has no protection under section 7-8, and what would be rebuilt is what is allowed by right, which is a single family dwelling. And I believe some of the board has stated that as well. I just wanted to note that as well. Well, the sequence has, has been the issue. You make it a two family first, um, and then by right, uh, and then can you tear it down? Uh, there's been situations where I'm sure that that has occurred um, over the years. Uh, the attempt by the uh, planning department and the town in terms of the warrant to c correct this is to make it standard so that there's not going to be any of that. But the property down the road, uh, that to me um, was the latest one and the board moved to have that uh, not torn down. It had to be it had to have gone forward by altering it, a, ma a minor alteration, by the way, as town council mentioned in, in his letter, alterations are, and I think uh, uh, Nick brought it up too, you can't have an alteration that's half the size or, or equal to the size of the existing structure. But the, the, the whole idea is, what is the sequence of, of things that you're gonna go through by to get to that right and to tear it down. I think that the letter by town council is very explicit about what the sequence has to be and what the sections of the bylaw are, is that you're asking for. And I, I, I strongly like the other board members I believe here uh, would support the decision of the building inspector because it is very clear and um, all towns rely a lot on the building ins on the building inspector's decision, but even further, when the town council agrees and sends out that letter of confirmation, it's just another stamp that they're doing the right thing. So when it comes before the board, you have to look at this. Um, I ne neglected to to have input from our newest member of the board. Uh, she's only sat two meetings so if she does not want to speak i understand and everything's been said that I <laughs> said, so. so unless there is other other for comments the for the record mr chairman just you know everything i'm hearing as far as size and you know reasonable operation the bylaw doesn't say it the alteration when you're talking about once it's turned down you lose it you don't that's part of the alteration the alteration talks about construction, reconstruction, change in location, a change in location of a building size, it, it, material, structural elements, it's a, it's a new building. So that's contemplated under your footnote one. It's clearly contemplated under your footnote one. And what town council is doing, he, he's trying to put reins on it because he's hearing from your planning department, like, oh boy, look what we've got here. This is a problem. How do we, and he's trying to, to put his arms around it and pull it back in. But unfortunately, the bylaw is what it is, and it says what it says. And that's and, 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 and that's the way that's the way 40A works. Is that when someone looks at a bylaw, they need to be able to rely on what it says. You read it; it's clear, defined term. That's what I can do. It once you start going down that slippery slope of, well. It's my opinion, and I think really the intent was this. 
And that's, that's not the way it works because then people can't rely on it. And those, and those are the arguments that are made at a higher level because you have to be able to rely on that bylaw. Once you start inserting subjectivity into the bylaw, and what you think it means or someone thinks it means, in my opinion, conversion, it's not fair to the people that buy it and the property owners. It's not fair to them. They're, they're entitled to rely on the bylaw. So, so okay. with, with that said, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I think I can kind of sense where this is going. Um, I'm pretty good at that. I've been doing this for a while. So when, when uh, things are probably going to go in our favor, we kind of figure that out pretty quick. Um, and I think um, what I was going to ask uh, you and the board uh, to potentially consider, um, because if we end up getting a denial here, which it looks like will be the case, then we're going to appeal it, obviously, as is our right, as I'm sure that, you know, maybe the inspector Absolutely. will, have, you know, and, and, and we're going to end up in court and resources are going to be spent and property is going to sit and neighbors are going to, you know, and it's going to be made safe pursuant to the building department requirements, but it's probably going to be boarded up or whatever and it's going to sit there for a long time while this gets resolved. I think potentially a better approach would be um, to request that this be continued with a direction for us to relook at a plan on reusing that property uh, and to meet with Mark in that regard and perhaps town council to come up with a plan um, that would be acceptable to the building commissioner in regards to the property. Um, you know, that, that, that is a suggestion and a thought. I don't think it hurts anybody to, to continue this for a meeting to allow us to try to do that. So what, what you're asking for is a continuance to reshape your initial application to the building inspector um, to the point where it may be consistent with what town council is asking for. Um, and that is, that's that whether you call it a footprint, whether you call it that existing 1942 structure uh, remains and then becomes altered, that's something that you can work out. This is what I'm hearing you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that but is I think correct. Uh, in, in, in what we would talk to Mark and town council about, we think that we can put an addition on that building under the current bylaw, and we will be looking to do that in a, in a reasonable form um, that works and fits. Um, and to the guidelines that have been discussed um, and maybe make this a productive event versus an adversarial event. If I may, consideration of that, then you wouldn't need to come back to Well, us. I think we would need this to continue because if we can't come to an agreement on that, um, then we would need a decision on this uh, to appeal. I mean, we, we, we Maybe would... it's better just to withdraw, if I... Sorry, just thinking out loud, but yeah. we um, actually, actually, it's not like a regular hearing. Yeah. We're asking for a decision one way or the other on the building inspector's right. determination mm -hmm. uh, of a request, which is a building permit yeah. um, and a denial letter. So we can't, you can't withdraw that mm -hmm. because it's already there. You have to, f it's, it's mm -hmm. on the books. You have to dispose of it one way or the other. A continuation, I don't, it's, it's I've, nev I've never done, I've sat with the board a long time, never done a continuation on the decision um, the of the building inspectors. I, I never have. So I'm the with your prerogative to on do the other you, don't, hand, you don't have to make a decision on this tonight. You're not required to do that. No, I don't know. On the other hand, if the building inspector and the applicant come to an agreement with the use of that uh, original building, would it be in order, and I've never seen it happen yet, but uh, would the client then come before the board and withdraw his appeal of the building inspector's decision? Well, for, there would be for the, two. He'd withdraw his appeal then if they come to an agreement. I would anticipate that that, that could occur. Okay. Yeah, that's that's... That's because if the board renders a decision, it's going to resources are going to be expended. Uh, meaning a decision is going to have to be drafted. We're going to have a statutory time frame to appeal it, which we're going to have to do. Town council is going to have to be involved in responding to that. 
it's a process that it, that the train is going to start down the track that it, it it becomes. But you know, if the board wants to do that, that's fine too. And 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 then you know, I mean, it's up to you. But you know, I just I just think once we start down that track, it, it opens the door for that property to just sit for quite a period of time. And um, well, the the initial the, the whole initial was when you submitted your your application for a building permit along with their uh, um, uh, vo the voluntary dis uh, demolition. demolition and all of the other things that you you put all the things together in one little package and, yes. and you gave it and his decision was given to you the next day and that's what you're appealing is that decision if you change that that whole package it would be a completely different well, scenario. So, so this, what I'm suggesting, this hearing would basically be continued. There'd be no decision yet, but it'd be a continued hearing. And then in the interim, it has to be ended at some time. Though. Of course, it does. At some point. Well, it's a statutory requirement that yeah, you have. Has to. To if be you ended. don't, if you don't, then it's then right. we win yes. constructively. And, and we're not, not looking. Not, to, and yeah. we're not going to do that. No, no, and I'm, and I'm openly telling you that. So we're not looking to do that. Um, you know, and so if we did, we would we would agree to you know extend the time for you to make a decision. And I've worked with Andrew on that, and file with the town clerk. We're not looking to put the board in in a box. We're looking to potentially find a resolution that could be beneficial to everybody, in, including the town, the neighborhood, and my client. Um, and that's what we're, that's what we're looking to do, because I think you know we feel very confident in our, in our case, uh, but quite frankly, you know, do we want to litigate it for a year? Probably not, right? Being honest with you. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, you know, it, it might be better to take a step back and then up, up with a plan that works. And Mark says, you know, with town council, this works. Then, you know, we would get a permit and we would withdraw this appeal. We would be withdrawn. We've never experienced this kind of a situation. But no, is, is there, there any way, is there any way that this board can delay its decision? on this appeal pending further discussion between them and them. I'm not, I'm not calling it a continuance. Yeah. No, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a, a continuance. continuance. It's basically a continuance. And, and, but I, and I think we could if there were like a particular case where we needed more evidence or something. Yeah. Uh, we could say, okay, come back and uh, dig out this new evidence, come back in two weeks, and then we'll make a decision. So I think it, it, it's, it's well, plausible that it could happen. Um, I think if if we were to con tell, tell me board members what, what your <laughs> thoughts are, I think it would be uh, appropriate to, to try this, but I think we need to have a postponement to a date certain, mm -hmm. no more than 30 days from now. And the reason I say that is if you can't come to an agreement within 30 days, this board needs to come back and make a decision and get and and. Uh, move forward one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does this uh, last mark too? Is this something that uh, you're willing to work with? Yes. Okay. Board members? Um, Makes sense to me. Eric? Yeah. 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 I, okay. I think it would be. I, I you know, I, I can't abide by the clients uh, or the attorney's arguments that uh, this is, if we make a decision tonight, well, then that's it. We're going to Superior Court or whatever. That's or right. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. you, you can make a decision tonight. I pulled the building inspector's decision, and you could go next week and come up with new plans and go in and see the building okay. inspector. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this isn't, that isn't necessarily a uh, premise that's going to happen. But I have, again, I uh, particularly I've never done it, but I have no issues with, uh, 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 as you say, continuing to a date certain, and at that particular time we will make a decision that night. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I would suggest um, you have the dates. Do we have anything? Uh, August seventh has two hearings, so I would advise for that. I'd advise that neither I nor Hillary will be here on August 7th. Wow. August 21st, we have four pending applications already, um, but you can elect to continue to that date right. before them. I, mean, um, I, I think this hearing 
continued will be pretty quick. <laughs> because I don't think there's any more evidence to be heard, right. and I think we, we probably know what the decision is going to be, and it will probably be a vote. Um, and you know that would be my guess. What I hope would be that um, prior to that meeting, you would get a letter from us saying that you know we've resolved this and we're you know we're going to. What's the what's the second on. August date? Twenty first. That's the better date. I, I would say seven up to that date. August seventh doesn't give me. We're talking no, August part of the giving time. I would prefer. Actually, it would. We're talking about the decisions made relatively soon, very quickly. Um, well, you wouldn't have the plans. Wouldn't have the new. We need yeah, Mr. Chairman, we wouldn't have plans. We might not be able to get with town council that quick. Um, yeah. So there did be issues. Correct. On August seventh. Okay, so we're looking at the twenty-first. Twenty-first is fine with me. It's not the twenty-first, but. Neither is Hillary. Okay. Um, I'll accept the motion to move the subject matter of this determination until the 21st of August. Uh, I would move. I would move to continue case number 19-14. I believe is that what it is? Mm -hmm. On the request of the petitioner, without prejudice, uh, until the regularly scheduled meeting of the board on August 21st. No, you. You're going, to, you're going to leave out without prejudice? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think we need that, uh, to be honest. Yeah, is, is, yeah just an appeal. Yeah, a decision yeah. on the yeah. 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 I'll second that. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, would you accept a letter from me extending the time for the board to render a decision? Uh, to pre prevent the uh, to be on the to be on the safe side because yes. I don't know how long this has been. Pending. I'm going to work that out with Andrew tomorrow. I didn't count the day. You know so. the date, and I will send the letter in to be filed with the town clerk. Okay. 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 And to protect the board. That'd be great. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. So we have a um, yes. First thing. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Okay. Five minutes. So we will continue until the 21st. Thank you for your courtesy. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Well, please continue. And it's on the card. Thank you, Mark. I think we're going to work with Chris a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I've noted that online, thank you. Is <laughs> <laughs> the expectation that they were going to tear down the building? So when he reviewed it initially, he said, sure. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was brought to one of the other slides they did. I mentioned you would have said yes, but you said yes, you can give the two bedroom, the two family to him. We have some other business before the board this evening. Mr. Um, Chairman, I'm going to dismiss myself. Yes. Before you thank you very much. You good stuff. No, thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies. You're right and ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, first item, I think, on the agenda is the reorganization of the board. Um, we have... Uh, Appointment of a new uh, chair and a new appointment of a uh, appointment of a uh, um, clerk or uh, second chair. Hmm. Well, is anybody interested? <laughs> As I said, I'm going to well, yeah, dispose be, potentially with yeah. my stud with teaching now. <laughs> yeah, with professors. No, I mean right now uh, it would have to be one of the five sitting members, to, uh, to and uh, I'm not. I would. Uh, I think I'll speak right now. I'll look as one member. I would look to Eric. He's been a member of the board for uh, a number of years. He certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, as well versed in, in the way we work things here. Okay. But on the other hand, I would like to hear his point if it be, you know, if he didn't, uh, if he had any reservations about it. Mm -hmm. My only reservation 
is that because my wife works nights on long nights, she says, you can't stay because you got to go home and deal with these four kids. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, I'm, I'm the chair, you know, there's an obligation to kind of be running the show and have there be some level of consistency. Otherwise, the vice chair is going to want to, you know, skin me alive every other week. <laughs> if the vice chair doesn't have any problem with, you know, me having to put in a, a mullen rule every other month, um, I don't have a problem with it. But like I said, because of that, I don't know if I'm ideally suited, but I'm willing to if, you know, if, if the call is there. Um. So you you would um, I kind of he, he, into that that he may he maybe has some reservations about it. But. Well, so so now the second thing would be um, we do need a vice chair at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and if we have something back and forth that way, uh, maybe the vice chair can be the chair, and Eric can be the vice chair. Vice chair all day um, long. <laughs> uh, and and, and, uh, and then like I said, give it give it time to yeah. move. Um, the appointment is basically for one year. Mm -hmm. um, do I have somebody who would be willing to do a, either a vice chair or a chair then? Um, I, I would. Uh, yeah, either one. Fine. Either one. Either one. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I would. It's not not uh, usurping. Uh, I have side to go well, because, because he is vice chair too. Okay. Oh, pardon? I'd be willing to do either one too for one year, and then I'm gone. Yeah, that's what I knew. So, and he's he's vice chair, and typically we've used that. I know. A, he's a springboard to the chair usually. But Eric and I had this conversation. Oh, okay. Oh. And he says, "I'd be delighted to be vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> He's chair, right?" And I said, "Well, okay, I don't want you to say that. I don't want you to say yeah. that." If, if, if that is is an option, yeah. uh, you, you're willing to work that way? Whatever works, yeah, that's fine. Huh? Like I said, I just... Are you willing to take chair? I'll do it. Okay. Then um, motion, do I hear a motion to uh, accept uh, Sai as chair for the upcoming, ac uh, I'm say academic year, <laughs> <laughs> fiscal year? Fiscal year. Fiscal year, really. Fiscal year, yeah. Yeah. And Did somebody want to make the motion? Uh, so I'll make that okay. motion, yeah. I'll nominate Cy uh, okay. as chair I'll for the upcoming uh, fiscal okay. year. I'll second that. Um, and then we'll do we have a, a, um, a motion to accept uh, Eric as the vice chair for the same time period? So moved. And I'll second that one also. All in favor? Okay, so we have a new right. chair and a vice chair. Beginning uh, the uh, next hearing is seventh. Uh, um, yes. I think I've already told you I'm looking to leave shortly. Um, I will stay through September only because we started a case with another sign, um, and I want to make finish that obligation too, so I'll stay through that. But after that, probably will submit my papers, which would mean uh, somebody else is going to have to move up and the select board will have to appoint When do you think you're going to be leaving? Myself? Yeah. Um, you know, my classes will be starting the last week of August and going through um, for the whole fall. Um, so we're depending basically on the, the two vacancies by the end by the yeah. September. Yeah, I mean, I, I can stay on mm -hmm. in some capacity until I feel like there's a burden that... And they need you to do that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm making myself available to be here to fill out the board and that we're not too many people, mm -hmm. but yeah. maybe it can work out. I might be able to stay on. Well, I think the, I think the point is the message to the town is you got to find two more people to show you this board, okay? <laughs> Easier than it sounds. <laughs> yeah, Hillary's going to become a voter. Either that or board. Hillary's going to move our fast. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> very quickly. Which is fine. I mean, uh, very quickly. <laughs> We're going to push her right along. <laughs> <laughs> Learn by fire. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but I think that's the message for the town. You've got to go find two more yes, people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. The sooner the better. Yep. <laughs> The sooner that happens, the sooner. The I believe you guys are one of the very few complete poets. So. <laughs> How many years? So I'm going to put a statue of you in the town. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> so I'll be on 30, so. Yeah. Well, I have no idea. I don't I don't. I do. It's like, it's right here. Looks like upwards of 30 years. That's right here. If you don't have to do this side, not necessary side. No, it's right here. I got it right here. Let's read the record. I've read decisions in the 80s, I believe, that you were on this board. It started in 1978. Wow. It's 41 years, right? Sure you want to give up so soon? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, see that. I, I remember the intent and purpose of a lot of this stuff, <laughs> but not the 42. <laughs> One. Oh dear. We discussed tonight. Uh, we also have some minutes before us. I don't know, did everybody have an opportunity? Uh, to do? Yeah. Just next on the agenda is the zoning changes. Well, I want to get rid of that first and then go to the zoning changes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, if, if not, I'll just go the other direction. And go the zoning changes that. Uh, no, let's do minutes first. That's fine. You can take it out of the uh, it, It's a short set of uh, yeah. Yeah. minutes. Um, I just found a few. Okay. First of all, first page. Uh, member's not absent. You got to spell Bob's name right. Okay. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. Good pick Good up, catch. Si. I missed Good it. Catch. <laughs> I missed it. Uh, and then uh, uh, let's get picky. <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, yeah, I, I had two picky comments, and they're basically just word tense. Uh, I'm not uh, sure yeah. we would, uh, in, in the leading paragraphs, and I know what they're doing, cutting and paste. Yep. Mm -hmm. If we could just put, we held a continuance, rather than will hold a, you know, zoning board gotcha. of appeals held a continuance of a public hearing. Yep. Like, we'll hold. And the same thing on the second uh, case on that. Got it. And that's basically all I had. I didn't catch my own name, but. Uh, below that, the third paragraph, Mr. Hagstrom stated he agreed with. Yep. He opined that it didn't seem like application. Like, it didn't seem like an application. I think it's application. I think the applicant. Yeah. The, the applicant. applicant. Like the applicant was ready. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have that same one. And uh, go down three more paragraphs, where it starts with Virginia Adams. She yep. says, we, she asked that the principles, is that a correct spelling? Or is it principles? I don't know. I'm not an English major. She asked who the principles were. Like the owners. I believe that's right? owners, yeah, so correct. I believe that's okay. correct. Oh, yeah. 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 Who took English? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't think I have Anybody else anything? No, that's it. Nope. Motion to accept as amended. So moved. Uh, there's one misspelling of my last of my name. Last page is oh. T U should be a T O R. Yeah. Ah, okay. Got also it. in the bold print, it's also a T U instead of a T O. Yep. Right. How do you spell it? T O R. T O R. A R W. Oh, it's, it's T O. There's just oh, yeah, two yeah. that have T U. Yeah. Last page. Yeah. And then motion to correct uh, the correction. <laughs> so we'll begin. <laughs> For a second. 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 Nick seconds. Nick. Uh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 
surprise there as, as a meds. Okay. Thank you. Um, Andrew. So, we just saw um, and heard CPDC is proposing some zoning bylaw amendments, one of them being footnote one. And as for many reasons that you heard before you, this is being proposed to be amended because over-the-counter decisions on this and the opinion of maintaining a single-family dwelling, can it be raised, how many rooms have to be maintained, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's very difficult for staff to make that determination over-the-counter, um, and town council has opined that it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Um, so we did see that before us tonight, just one of many struggles with interpretation of the bylaw. So what Julie and I have worked with and CPDC board members as well have m motioned or will on August hopefully motion and close the public hearing on these amendments. One of them to be removing footnote one from the business and industrial districts because it serves no purpose there since two family dwellings are allowed by right. So there's no need for it in those districts. And when we amend 532 in residential districts, we have incorporated language that would be upon receipt from a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Very similar to accessory, accessory apartments, we kept the language very similar due to some public input um, on the numbers. We at first had a percentage of increase we then went with the accessory apartments to keep it in line since the board is familiar with that and we find that it won't be too detrimental to the neighborhood for such additions when conversion. And as you see, we do allow the word conversion, not alteration, because of the problems we've had with that. And we also give more detail that if it is demoed, that the footnote no longer applies because to staff that is the intent of the bylaw to maintain the existing dwelling and we'd like to keep the footnote instead of completely deleting it because if we completely delete it there's a history trail that we wouldn't be able to track of these already converted dwellings and we would also like the idea of being able to add a small housing supply to our town that could be somewhat more affordable to residential owners than a new McMansion going up. Um, so we're hoping to keep that intent and define that intent under footnote one. Again, that would go before you guys as another special permit, giving you the purview to either accept or deny under the conditions of not being more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, this, they don't relate to the performance standards of the accessory apartments besides the um, 1,000 square feet or one-third area of the dwelling. So, so if we apply this to a, a hypothetical situation right. like we had this evening, right. <laughs> um, you're allowing you're allowing uh, conversion on a house to be upwards of a thousand square feet. So that would be the absolute maximum, and I think you would see that primarily on larger lots and large houses, which back in 1942 wasn't always. The houses aren't as enormous as that um, typically, so it could be. It very well could be a thousand square foot addition but we're doing the lesser, a thousand or one third of the gross floor area. It's just like accessory apartments. Carved from the existing? From the existing dwelling. Dwelling on? On the date of application. Which is, well, on, on the application or dating back to 1942? I believe on, I don't want to misspeak. Let me just reread just in case. Right, yeah. is it of the square footage of the original building yeah. or inclusive of any additions in the entire history of the building? No, no, no. It would just be... Nope, you, so it is... You would be going back 
the easier thing in my mind, especially having gone through what we had this evening, was would it be easier to clarify the issue in note one on what is considered to be the existing structure in 1942 and from that carve out with minimal alterations um, to make it a two family rather mm -hmm. than to tear it down because we're going to have more of this on the on the older homes right um, you might have a trouble doing that calculation in the case we're talking about tonight yeah that's right we don't know some of the changes that's that were made exactly we don't know we, we may come to a situation where a homeowner comes and says well I, I know the building's older than you know in its existing state uh, the original form is older than 1942, but there are additions. I don't know if they are or are not. There might not be any record of portions of additions. Correct, and we don't want to not allow a new homeowner to be able to do some sort of addition to their house, and especially if you're going to need space for egress and etc. Or just the feasibility of making the right. building work. It's too large as a single family. Right. Mm -hmm. We need, have a need for in the town mm -hmm. smaller residences on the same land mm -hmm. so that people can afford a small unit or a half size or whatever. Um, so we're trying to make accommodations as such. So mm -hmm. then the question is, is it clear as to what the basis of that thousand or one third of the existing is? Is it just, hey, if you built a small addition and you had rights to build it uh, two years ago, right. but now came with the intent of, well, based on what we have on that property mm -hmm. now, that square footage. That map that you sent us, mm -hmm. Eric, I think you said there's a lot of properties mm -hmm. on that map that fall into the category of being very old. Right. Uh -huh. They're they're lost. They're, they're very small. 900 units. So you're not going to be able to do this on it. Most, right. So that's lots. where also yeah. we felt we had protection based on our current bylaw of 25% lot coverage, side setbacks, yeah. front setbacks, etc. So most of those will not qualify in the right. smaller Right. This is just a quickly drawn list of Correct. houses that could potentially conform to footnote one. None of them, or definitely not even close to all of them have been accepted to be allowed to convert and they yeah. might not be if if you had someone that has a house has a property right. and they want to convert it right. okay and you look at that house and say okay at the time they want to they're asking for the conversion mm -hmm. it's a certain amount of square footage mm -hmm. it's well, maybe if you went to the records and the town records and you saw that some of that square footage was added after Mm -hmm. 42, and you could prove it. Mm -hmm. You could subtract that maybe mm -hmm. from and leave it whatever the residual that either if you was before or you couldn't, you didn't have any record of it. Just if you like count if, that as being part of the base. If you go back to the record cards dating back to 42, yeah. yes. And then use that as it's interpretive, but it's, it's common sense interpretation. <laughs> I, I guess the question also begs what is the harm if you're going by what the existing what square footage right now? as it is they come forth it's this right. is the total square footage what's the harm in just acknowledging great you're going to be able to make an improvement to the community by giving this proper square footage needed for two people to live i would why lose, I would compromise sleep over that i would lose sleep i wouldn't i don't see where we might run into detriment in providing a sizable a structure to <laughs> be living. Well, I mean, as it's written right now, that's exactly what it says, is right. that um, it'll be one-third of whatever is existing, either at the time of the application or January 2020, whichever is earlier. And I would think that it would be a lot easier for us to determine that snapshot with current assessing records, because like mm -hmm. now we actually like are Here's really are. good at it, as opposed to like archaeology back in like 1942 yeah, yeah. with like these spotty records. And what if the jacket, you know, has mold on it and you can't read it? <laughs> um, it just seems like that would be the cleanest way, so that you're not, you know, pouring over like decades worth of assessing cards trying to figure out where did this porch come from and is, is this basement finished right it just this is seems still a footnote that's why we don't have the performance standards all the performance standards of accessory apartments it's a footnote we can't make it 
two pages of the bylaw. Um, and we feel that it gives us some protection to what is already happening and gives us a better foot forward. And so I'm happy to bring up the idea of subtracting what we know for a fact isn't from 1942, but I think it gets more complicated from there. Um, just almost as much complication as we have now, which is what we're trying to avoid. And the rest of um, five uh, three two would apply five three one three two, no five three two mm -hmm. um, in terms of it maintaining its its appearance mm -hmm. as a single family. Right. So we are having troubles with that with our, with our accessory apartment. Mm -hmm. When so we're going to have, I'm just pointing out. I do recognize that as a challenge because this doesn't have the door must be on the side, door egress can't be from, et cetera, et cetera. So because the houses are not, uh, they, they were not built that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to have to have your, your uh, means of egress on the side rather than in the front. Mm -hmm. Or means so, of entry. Mm -hmm. Means of entry. Means, well, means of entry or, or, or even any means of egress. So I think that one of the things that this raises in my mind is the difference between an accessory for an in-law or other to cohabitate because you're family. This is saying you're being able to convert a building into a two-family dwelling. Right. Why not allow it to look and appear like it has two distinct entrances? Because... The intent of the original, at least what we find, that the intent is to keep the external appearance of a single family dwelling that was already in the bylaw, that's already what has been discussed with applicants, staff, etc. And we don't want the case where, according to this map, someone in this area could up who lives next to four single family homes can all of a sudden be living next to what looks like for two family homes. We want to maintain the appearance and the character of the town. So yeah. in these single family zones, it's a single family zone. So we don't want to allow the appearance of two families. I actually like that it says, uh, keep the appearance of the existing single <laughs> family, not just a single family. Right. It's a good, mm. good. Thank you. Please, if there's any more feedback, you can shoot me an email with it or come in and chat or anything um, if you have concerns, ideas. Well, it might be a stupid comment, but uh, we use the word altered in the bylaws mm -hmm. now, okay? And there is a definition of alteration to mm -hmm. section two. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about a definition for conversion? Yeah. I believe the idea was thrown out there. Um, Yes. I would also add to alter, redefine it, to clarify that it's not the dem demolition of the right. building. Uh, uh, yes, both. we so, did bring up that idea. Um, I believe we thought it wasn't, it was then, if we don't give it a definition, it is the building dis inspector's determination and interpretation, so we kind of like to have that flexibility. But right on the other hand, right. <laughs> I think alteration is not removal of. The confrontation of getting right. into the yeah. court of appeals, right. and, uh, it's not there. Correct. Uh, okay. It's no longer interpretation, yeah. now it's I mean, a judgmental decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Alternative yeah. is also to look at what the definition of demolition is. <laughs> and right. removal of a building and say, okay, here's alteration, here's demolition. You can't, you know, potentially, well, if this went further to court, I would think that the town would want to bring up the definition of I mean, demo. If we get into that, then we want a definition of reconstruction, and then we want a definition of whatever else. So True, but I think that at this point, there it seems to be a, a history of examples in which contractors, owners have, understandably so, dove into mm -hmm. the weeds of right. the language to to resolve something, sometimes mm -hmm. in a favorable way, other times in a just in a way that benefits only themselves. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what you have in black and white, 
It's not going to be right. If you leave it in gray and you have a very competent uh, building commissioner, as we have right now, um, that should be taken care of. Uh, in talking with the building and our present building commissioner, um, I, I feel very strongly that he, he's got a lot of zoning experience behind mm -hmm. him. Um, and this whole thing of reconstruction and demolition, um, it used to be, and he remembers it, and I certainly do, um, if you were going by the footprint of the building and replacing the building and you left one wall up, um, that suffice and you could mm -hmm. build on the foot. Well, that no longer applies. It's gone down to defeat uh, in the courts. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think how things have transpired over time is important to look at. Mm -hmm. And the intent and purpose, which was discussed tonight, the intent and purpose, I think, was very clear. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that the date that note one was put in there. I'm going to say it was sometime in the uh, late 50s or early 60s, but I don't know. I do remember when uh, we moved the town from an S10 to an S15 mm -hmm. and created 70% of our our lots as being non-conforming. That's why mm -hmm. everything comes channeling down here. Mm -hmm. But the, the point of the matter is you have to trust the people and the staff to some degree too. And when you have good, competent people, I think that that's important. I would just ask, if you look at this, and the only one that I see as a potential problem is the entrance, the entrance resembling the, um, the single family persona, mm -hmm. because it's it's already creeping up into all of our, well, half of our cases this year so far have been accessory apartments. And each one, we struggle with that. I, I think Nick brought up the good point, though, that in this particular case, they do say existing. It's to maintain the semblance of a single family house as the existing one does. And, uh, well, I yeah, think that's, 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 that's a key word in there. That's a key word. But, you know, we, I mean, we just react because <laughs> we're the zoning board. I, actually, other towns call it the board of adjustment, but it's, it's the same type of thing. You look at it, see if it's reasonable. If, if you can do something, that's fine. If you can't do something because mm -hmm. the, the black and white is too specific, then, then you just hang your hat on that. But I think asking you guys in mm -hmm. CPDC, the authors of these changes in zoning, mm -hmm. that you look at all sides of the coin before you... We have thought of the idea of trying to express relating to the accessory apartment performance standards, but it's difficult to word that way, and it's hard. It's not the same as an accessory apartment, so... The first question you'll get at town meeting. What's right. the difference? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, there are more zoning changes than this. This is really the only one that directly affects CBA, so I didn't hand the rest, but we are going to expressly permit mixed use in business A, which is South Main Street, uh, similar to what you see in the downtown here, but we're going to more allow more of that on South Main Street to try to get a better development and a better, uh, safer, more pedestrian-friendly South Main Street. Um, it'll take time and there's a lot to it with the inclusionary zoning and commercial components. The goal is to keep it primarily commercial because it's our really last commercial corridor in town. So. It's and all of that comes from CPDC anyway. Yes, so and that will be by special, special permit program from program CPDC. Well. Yep. And then that goes with intensity regulation changes for such. And then we're looking at marijuana and CBD changes, which is a nightmare, and I won't even get into because I have no idea <laughs> how to properly explain it. Town Council will be handling that one. Um, but if you're interested at all, we have a thousand abutters we're sending notices to to business from business A. So please come and 
provide comments if you wish and how we can make it better. Just a clarification, what is the definition of South Main Street? From where, what point initiates? Um, I believe it, it is where business B ends and business A begins. That's technically what we call South Main Street. I'd have to refer to our design guidelines. Um, in zoning, we don't call it South Main Street, we just say the business A zoning district. There's a small piece in the south and in the north as well, but they're very minuscule and mm -hmm. not to really be impacted. Um, but this corridor here, really below the downtown, is South Main Street. South of the train tracks? Yes. Well, and a little bit north of the train tracks, too, I would assume. Uh, or is it only south of? Yes. Business A, uh, really, I believe. It, it's business A, is, yeah, you're right, Maptown, yeah. just south of the train tracks. Yeah. There's a break, and yep. it's back and to then, the, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, and it's a bit odd where there's a break to a single family right in between the two business A's, so. It's okay, it's some. Other than that, I mean, it's a lot of work, but we're ready for it, so. Any other business before the board this evening? Seeing none, hearing none, do we hear a motion? To adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you're referring to right Yes, now. I am. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Zero, zero. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.